So how cool would it be if you could run your entire computer from a little thumb drive instead of from your hard drive? I looked all over the place for videos on how to do this and I didn't find any that just did it step by step in a logical way. I think I found the easiest way to do that. So why would you want to do that? Why would you want to run your computer from just a flash drive? Well, one reason is if you configure that flash drive with Linux instead of Windows, don't worry about Linux, it's just as easy as Windows. I'm gonna prove that to you in a few seconds. Uh, you could actually browse on the internet and have no worries at all about downloading a virus. First of all, there are very few viruses, if any viruses that have ever been written for Linux. And second, even if you were to encounter a computer virus on any website that you chose to go to, uh, it's just gonna wind up on the flash drive since we've booted up and we're completely running our computer, the whole operating system, from the flash drive. There are lots and lots of other advantages. For one thing, if you're running Linux on your little flash drive, you're, you're gonna get a speed increase. Almost every time I've done this, it's been like a two or three times speed increase. And we could go into the reasons for that, but this is gonna be a fast video to show you how to get set up, get running with it right away. Uh, there's a lot of other things too that I like. If you were to download some files when you're browsing, who knows what pages on the internet, uh, they're gonna wind up on the flash drive. When you turn your computer off, you pop this out and you walk away with it and there's nothing left behind on the computer. So your delicate files are not in danger of anything that you might encounter on the internet and anything that you're doing on the internet other than what the ISP might log uh, just winds up on this flash drive which goes in a pocket. And I just think these days especially, that is a really nice basic safety feature to have. I also like the fact that when my kids are browsing the internet, if they wanna play games, you know those game sites are not super, super secure as far as viruses go. That's an understatement. Uh, if they boot up on a little flash drive and play their games, then it doesn't matter what they download. It's gonna wind up on their own little system on their own little flash drive. So as I said, we're gonna do this in the simplest possible way. There are gonna be three quick programs that we're gonna download and I'm gonna show you how to set your computer up for this. If by any chance you feel I'm gonna make this simple, but that it's technically a little bit challenging, I got a cheap and easy way for you to have one of these. It's all set up and ready to go. And I'm gonna put a link at the end of the video that goes to a webpage which makes these steps in brief, in addition to what we're gonna do briefly here. And also we'll give you a source where you can get one of these. It's ready to rock and roll, but follow me through the steps. It's not that bad. It's actually a lot of fun. And you're gonna be amazed at how cool it is to walk up to any computer anywhere with your little flash drive plug it in and suddenly you're on your browser with your settings, your system, you pop it out, you walk away, you're gone. I love it, let's give it a go. Okay, so step one, load that little flash drive right into your USB port. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is get our computer ready and we're gonna do that by starting it up and pressing F2 until we get into the computer's BIOS menu. So that should come right up here. There we go. And this is going to be the one modification that you have to make if you want to run your system or any computer from a flash drive. And from BIOS, which you have gotten to on boot up, you need to change or check the boot order. The boot order is simply the order in which the computer looks at the different disks that are attached to it, hard drives, flash drives, CD-ROM drives, to decide which one has an operating system for it to start up on. So we want it to look to the flash drive first. Now, a lot of different systems look different. Uh, on this one, here's our boot order. We've got uh, the Pioneer RW, which is the CD that it looks to first. We've got the regular internal hard drive that it looks to second. And then we've got that little flash drive that we just plugged in that it looks to third. So we want it to look first to that flash drive and we're just gonna change the order like that. Uh, there's also a boot menu here which shows you the order that the different drives are in. This is the one thing that on your computer or any computer you install your little flash drive on uh, is gonna be different and that's how it shows the boot order. A lot of times it looks a lot more like this. We'll say enter advanced mode, sure, why not? This is how most computers look, just not quite as fancy of an interface and you simply will go through the different options here to boot order until you find the order that it's booting up in and you can change it so it checks the flash drive first. Now the cool thing here is you only have to do this once and from then on, if the flash drive is in your computer, your computer will start up on your alternate operating system which is built into your flash drive. And if your flash drive isn't in place, your computer will boot up normally like it always has and uh, there won't even be any evidence that your flash drive has ever been or not been there. So once you've changed your boot order, you can exit. It'll ask you, do you wanna save the changes when you exit? And you will say yes, and we will exit out of here and three programs and we're gonna be done. 
Okay, so these are the three programs that you're going to need to have your flash drive work as its own operating system. First, we'll need an operating system, so let's do an installation of Linux. As I promised, it's going to look just like Windows, so going from one to the other is going to be very easy. I'm going to use Ubuntu, so if you can do a Google search on Ubuntu, you'll find out what the latest revision of that is. Or in the comments and also in the associated webpage, I'm going to give the addresses for all three of the programs I'm going to show. So this is going to be our future operating system. The next program we need is a program called Rufus. Now it is possible to do all these things without these little helpful programs, but what makes this such a fast and easy installation is to have programs that do all this for you. And they're free and they're mostly open source, so you can really trust, as far as I know, any of these programs that I'm going to show you. They worked great for me. Now what Rufus does for you is Rufus will format your little flash drive for you, and it will allow you to format it as a bootable disk meaning that when Windows looks at it, it will begin to look for an operating system because there are system files which will then be installed on your disk. As I said, you can install them yourself, but this little program is going to do it for you. And the last program that we need is going to be something to take all of the files from Ubuntu or our Linux installation and to properly arrange them on the flash drive for you. And once again, there are complicated steps which will allow you to do the same thing from the command line interface if you want to go ahead and do that. But this is an excellent program and it also allows you one additional fantastic feature, which is really important, and that is it allows for something called a persistent file. Now, the first couple of times I did installations of Linux onto a flash drive, Every time I turned the computer back on, I had to reset up everything that was on the flash drive because it would forget in between. But in this case, uh, when you install it using the universal serial installer, once again, all the addresses for these are going to be in the comments and the associated web page. Uh, so when you use this program, you can specify up to two gigabytes of memory that will stay on your flash RAM. And when you turn your computer off, it's going to save all your settings each time. So it's going to be just like any other operating system. When you turn your computer on, the browser is going to remember your history. Of course, it's all on a flash drive. So when you pull it out and walk away, your history goes with you. But it's going to remember it all for you, make it very convenient. You're just going to put it in. It's going to boot up, and we're going to be ready to go. So let's go ahead. We'll step through these programs, and we will do the installation. OK, so back at Ubuntu, let's go ahead, and we're going to download it. So we'll go ahead, and we will click download. We will download Ubuntu Desktop. You can choose whether your computer is 64-bit or 32-bit, and you'll click the download button. It comes to a page where it will ask you, uh, do you want to make a donation? And these folks at Ubuntu and Linux work really hard. It's a try before you buy it. If you end up enjoying it, I definitely would encourage you to make that donation and keep these guys going so we can do these things for free. We've already done it, so let's go ahead. We'll skip past that. Over time, you know, some of these steps as far as downloading it may change a bit, but just follow the prompts on your screen. It asks you to save the file. We're going to click OK. In this case, I've already saved the file to save time on the video, so I'm going to cancel it. We'll go to the next one. We will download Rufus in the same way. You'll just follow the steps here on the screen to download, and we will download the USB uh, driver as well. Once these are all downloaded, they're going to appear in a directory. Here's that directory with the three files that we just downloaded, Rufus, Ubuntu, and our universal installer. The first thing we'll run is Rufus. It's going to ask us if that's OK. We'll say, sure, why not? We agree to everything, right? Uh, we can quick format, or we can do a full format. I'm going to recommend that you go ahead and do a full format by de-emphasizing or de-checking the quick format and make certain that your file system is FAT32. That's what uh, your other uh, programs are going to want. Uh, so unless you know that your flash drive is already formatted in FAT32, let's go ahead and do the whole thing here. Uh, the next thing is make sure that you've checked Create a Bootable Disk. And that is all there is to it. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll hit Start. And this is the thing I wanted to warn you about. Uh, it's going to say, make sure that you have selected the flash drive right here where it says select the flash drive. If you were to select your hard drive when you did this, uh, it will go ahead and reformat your hard drive, <laughs> which you probably don't want to do. So we'll go ahead and we'll say, OK, it definitely is the flash drive. Yes, only eight gigabytes. And this actually works very, very quickly. But I will jump ahead as I don't believe in watching status bars on videos. OK, so our next program is going to be that universal USB installer. Let's click on that. Same message. Are we sure we want to do it? Yep. We'll go ahead and we look at this uh, important announcement telling us that we agree to all sorts of legal things we don't understand. Do we? We do, of course. What else can we do? Uh, and then this is a very simple program to use. Your universal serial installer will ask you in the first blank, 
what version of Linux you want to install. We've got Ubuntu first and then all sorts of different flavors you might want to choose from if you're going to make, uh, if you're going to experiment with it or have different versions of Linux. We're going to select Ubuntu because that's us. It wants to know where that file is that we downloaded when we downloaded the Ubuntu uh, operating system. So we'll click Browse and there it is. It comes right up. Uh, a good idea is when you've downloaded all those programs to put them in the same folder. It just makes them easier to find. We will select that. We will say Open. So it's knows to install Ubuntu. Uh, the next thing is it wants to know what the letter of the drive is. We will say F because we happen to know on this system that's the flash drive. Again, make sure that you're installing to the drive letter that corresponds to your flash drive. And then here's where we set that persistent file, the one that's going to go ahead and it's going to remember for us uh, whatever changes we've made when we're in our system, in our operating system and doing our thing. So just bring this slider over until it reaches about two gigabytes. More than two gigabytes is actually just a waste of memory as it's not going to access it. So I usually just slide it over until I have just a little bit less than two gigabytes. And then you will click create. And from there, it's going to create the whole flash drive for you. And as soon as that's done, we're ready to start running with our new operating system. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to turn our computer on. The flash drive is in, the operating system is installed. Okay, each time you boot up on the flash drive, you'll get this screen first, or you'll get a screen like this. Now when you get to this screen, it's going to ask you, do you want to try Ubuntu without installing it on your hard drive? or do you want to make a full installation onto your hard drive? You actually can install uh, Linux onto your hard drive and have it share the drive with Windows if you'd like. But that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do today, which is to have the entire operating system on the flash drive. So each time you boot up using the flash drive, this is your first stop and you will select try Ubuntu without installing it. And that's going to take us straight to the installation on the flash drive and we're going to be able to run from there. So let's click enter. Okay, and that's it. You're actually now running from a Linux operating system. Uh, built into Ubuntu is uh, Firefox, so you have a web browser ready to go. And I'll just go ahead, even though this really pretty much completes what we needed to learn, and I'll show you how I usually set up Ubuntu to run. So the first thing I do is I'll come over to what looks like this little radio icon here. And this is what allows us to connect to a network. So you'll come down, you'll find your Wi-Fi network here and you will click on it. And when you click on it, it'll come up and ask you for your password. You'll enter that like you would any computer. As soon as you've done that, your internet is working. You can actually come over here to the Firefox browser and just go ahead and give it a click. It takes a few seconds to load, and I'm sure you recognize this. It looks like any other browser. Here we are in Google. Now, one of the primary things that I know a lot of people like to do with the flash drive is you want to stream movies. So it's handy for that to have flash installed, since that's most things like YouTube require flash in order to stream the, the movies. Getting flash uh, into your Ubuntu package is really simple. You'll notice this little icon here says Ubuntu Software Center. So we will click on that. And this is where you can get just about any software you would like for your system. When you click on it, a, a box comes up and it shows you the software that's available. There's a search blank up here in the upper right. We'll type flash and enter. And there you go, Adobe Flash plugin. You'll double click on this, follow the instructions. It's just going to say, are you sure you want to install it? And are you sure you like the source, which we do because it's right here from the software center and flash will be installed on our system. So now we've got a great browser in Flash. Also, uh, the uh, Google browser, Chrome, works beautifully under Ubuntu. You can almost always find a way to get just about anything to work here. So at this point, you've got a virtually a standalone browser running from your Flash RAM and a high degree of anonymity. Now, one of the things, if you're streaming from a lot of crazy places, that I like to add as well, as a matter of fact, it made my Yahoo Mail work properly for the first time ever, uh, is a program called Adblock. So if you just go to a Google search of Adblock Plus um, and include the word Firefox, let's do that. Adblock Plus and Firefox, because that's the browser that we're starting off with here. You're going to find a page right away for that. Here we go, Adblock Plus. And it says Add to Firefox. And one click and boom, it's going to be added to Firefox. That'll get rid of almost all the advertising that you come across when you're on the internet. So that alone is handy, but I've just found that it's it's super handy if you're going to a lot of sites uh, that you might want to with anonymity because those pop-ups are one of the most dangerous things about them as far as getting a virus, malware, or something showing up on your computer that you never intended to have on your computer. So that completes 
how to do an installation, three simple programs, uh, one tiny modification to your BIOS. Everything's on the web page, uh, including, if uh, it is a little bit uh, technically challenging, ready-made flash drives that you can get from me if you'd like. Uh, and you'll be able to do all this by just plugging them in. Hey, it just occurred to me I could give you a couple of quick other notes in case you're new to Linux. Very simple to use. But another thing here that you'll find on the menu bar is your system settings. And from there, this is just like you'd find with any other operating system. But you can do things like change when your display times out. Uh, you can change your power management settings, all the normal things you can do. So I just wanted to point out that button, even though I'm sure you'd find it in no time. You'll also notice that in other operating systems, your minimize, maximize, and, uh, and eliminate uh, uh, buttons are usually on the right hand side. We know the operating system I'm talking about. And of course, everybody that comes up with a new operating system has to be different. So things that were on the right here uh, on other operating systems are on the left in Linux. You'll just find them over here. As funny as it sounds, that actually tripped me up for a couple of minutes when I first loaded it up. And the other thing I'd like to show you is how to exit Linux. It actually exits and enters much faster than most other operating systems. This little gear in the upper right hand corner is your clue to click. And uh, you've got all sorts of things. You can set your calendar. You can set the time, get all that going. All of this is going to stay when you pull the drive out because of that persistence file that we created. Or clicking on the gear, you come right here to uh, suspend or shut down. And it's just as you would expect. Let's shut her down. It drops right down to uh, a turned off computer in just a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm.